how did you decide to go into teaching art? It actually found me. I didn't really go looking for it. Where do you find your inspiration? I guess I'm fascinated by the light. I'm fascinated by how light affects colour. And you just form a connection, you form a bond with the people, you form a bond with the landscape because you're surrounded by it. And then that just forms this sense of belonging. Hi, I'm Alina Reddy and welcome to Foreign Influence. It is incredible when a person has a gift, but it is even more remarkable when they have the talent to pass their gift to other people by teaching them. We are in Uluru, the heart of Australia, and we are going to interview Vivi Pellegeorge, who is an art teacher and brought a group of her students to this very magic location. for being a part of our show Foreign Influence. You're welcome, Alina. Thank you very much for inviting what a me. beautiful setting. <laughs> yes, doesn't get much better than this. Just gorgeous being out here, Uluru in the background. Vivi, you were born into a Greek family. What cultural traditions do you remember from your childhood? Um, well, my parents, uh, both born in Greece, came out in the late 50s. So I was born here with my sister. Our life very much revolved around family and a lot of the extended family came out at the same time as my parents. They all tried to live near each other so we were always with each other on weekends. Religious holidays and birthdays were very important. There's a lot of food preparation, a lot of gathering, cousins all get together and play. We used to get up to all sorts of mischief. Were you from fun. a big family? One sibling, my sister and I, in our family, and the same with a lot of my cousins. There was usually just two kids in each family, but there was about four or five families. There was a lot of us when we'd get together, and so Easter, Christmas, there was always big gatherings and lots of, lots of fun, lots of cooking, lots of eating. And name days were very important too in the Greek uh, yeah, tradition. It's, yeah, it's a very important yeah. So most, most Greek people are named after a saint and that saint celebrates a special day once a year and between, I don't know, 20 of us we were celebrating quite a bit. It was just great, a lot of fun being with a big family. Even though they weren't immediate, it was extended, but we, all, we were all very close. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. What career did you decide to pursue after school? Well, I loved the sciences when I was at school and I loved painting and art too, even though I didn't study that in the last few years of high school. And I wanted to do medicine. I just had this fascination with how the body works and disease and illness and finding cures and helping people. I've always enjoyed a pathway where I could help people. So didn't get into medicine, tried the next best thing, which was biological sciences. And I uh, graduated from Monash in microbiology and immunology. And oh, then, very impressive. <laughs> it was very interesting work, very interesting work. So very satisfying to find the cause that's making someone sick and following it through to the end with the treatment options. And that was very satisfying. So was university something that you always wanted to go to from when you were little? Or? Yeah, I think so. I remember maybe 14, 15 years old, I was, we would often drive past Monash University on Princess Highway and there was this big impressive building on the left and 
I'd be thinking, I want to go in there one day. I would want to explore that building and all the options, um, all the different career choices that just look like something to strive for and, and that's where I ended up going. So I was very happy, yeah. The big question now, the reason why we're here in Uluru, when and how did you get interested in art? I was always interested in art. I was always drawing and my highlight was every week or every couple of weeks going to the shops with mum to pick up a new colouring book. Had my eye on Derwent colouring pencils but never got the chance to get them <laughs> yeah, until much later on. Ones, they were yeah. so expensive mm -hmm. and very precious. I was always drawing, always colouring in right up until, well I never really stopped actually. And I remember in year 11 and 12, they had an art competition and I submitted some paintings and they went up into the art show at the school. And then in year 12, they asked us if we wanted a, a mural done on our year 12 common room. And we all said yes, of course, because we could have coffee and tea in there, unlike all the other forms when they couldn't get anything. And they also asked me if I wanted to paint the mural. Oh, wow. And that was a huge honour. That was really exciting. So I'm yeah, sure it was great very memories. well deserved. Where do you find your inspiration? My inspiration comes from many different places, primarily landscape. I guess I'm fascinated by the light. I'm fascinated by how light affects colour. And it just comes from different locations and I love to travel and see different areas because that, that sort of shows me and teaches me different techniques and different colour combinations, uh, explore different textures, different compositions and hopefully that makes me a better painter and occasionally you know there are many times in, in an artist's or a painter's life when they get stuck for inspiration and what I find really helps is going through some really good art books and going to galleries and so visiting exhibitions and they are also a source of inspiration. So you like learning from the greatest? Of course, <laughs> yes. So much to learn. Never stop learning. Yeah, and you all, I always um, turn to them when I'm, when I'm wanting some guidance, I guess. <laughs> you decide to go into teaching art? It actually found me. I didn't really go looking for it because I'm naturally a fairly conservative, shy person. I never really thought about going out and, and teaching, but I did have somebody approach me that was running some art classes and they said, we need a watercolour teacher to teach beginners. Are you interested? And I thought at the time, oh, look, if it's beginner, I'll give it a go. And so that's how it started. And how long was it since you had to leave your full-time job and completely go into art? It would have been um, a few years, maybe two or three years. I just enjoyed the teaching so much. It just made me feel so honoured to be part of that journey of my students' life. to um, start with like a really warm mauve colour. Just let it run.
what do you love the most about teaching, if you had to break it down? If I had to break it down, it would be the sharing of ideas. I learn a lot from them as I hope they learn from me, but also the gratification I feel when I see how they're improving and how they're moving from small little paintings to bigger paintings and I can see their techniques improving and when I see a smile light up their face, mm. that's just a real buzz. Mm. I just love seeing them get the pleasure from it that I get as well. Well, I can see how you yeah. feel that yeah. it's so rewarding for you mm. to see people improve because I've experienced it firsthand <laughs> learning from you. It's really important to paint what you love. Um, it's, you know, the painting won't work if you're painting half-hearted about subject that you're not enjoying. You really need to enjoy what you're doing and that passion and that excitement is going to come through. It will come through into your work. Isn't this fantastic? We've got music. I know, it's beautiful. We just sat here. We're going to dance on tables tonight? Well, here I'm going to just play some slow stuff. You're coming back to the bistro, right? Alright. Always gone too long. Suggesting the grasses. So maybe it's easier to put the um, the bluey shadow in. at the top. Do you actually remember the first lesson you gave? I think I do, maybe not the first one, but the first couple or so, and living in um, Bayside by Morris near Ricketts Point, I had this obsession at one stage, painting nothing but Ricketts Point, I just absolutely loved it. And well, so it is a marine sanctuary, yeah, very, so very I think I must special. have painted it a hundred times or more in different colours, different moods, different aspects, so I think my first lesson would have been a watercolour of um, Ricketts Point. <laughs> What are the different places your teaching has taken you to? Well, apart from the different locations in Victoria, just running uh, small workshops uh, based with outdoor painting or en plein air, like in the Grampians, Wilson's Prom, up in the high country in Bright, I've been very fortunate to be able to travel interstate to Broken Hill and here in the Northern Territory, but 
also to France and Greece and the UK and, and they have been amazing and I just keep pinching myself. I can't believe that you know I'm actually in these locations and I can't believe that I've actually been so they have been amazing. How do you think the culture and environment affect the painting experience? The culture and the environment you could almost put them together you just get a really deep understanding of the location and the environment when you go to a new location to paint. You get to meet the people, you get to experience their food, the way they entertain. You get to see the landscape which is different, to, a little bit different to ours. And you just form a connection, you form a bond with the people you form a bond with the landscape because you're surrounded by it and, you, and you're looking at it all the time. And then that just forms this sense of belonging or this sense of being a part of the area. And then that really helps with your painting. So spending you know, a fair bit of time getting to know the people, getting to know the location so that it becomes a part of your process when you paint. And also being away from home for people in your group, it takes them away from everyday chores, so it also frees their mind yeah. to create. Being in that relaxed frame of mind also helps them to create. It just opens up all those creative channels and they just absorb the beautiful colour, the beautiful environments mm. um, and they paint more freely. <laughs> trip, art trip that you took, oh, you, that you took people yeah, on? Yeah, they're all memorable for different reasons. I guess a couple of recent ones would have to be the Greek islands and... Why? I think also, also because I'm Greek, even though I'm born here, I just feel a, a deep sense of connection traveling between islands on the Ionian coast and we went through some caves and you just felt that you were in the presence of the gods. It just, it was just the most incredible moment and then the weather was perfect, the water was beautiful, we were all jumping off the boat <laughs> swimming. There was so much laughter and so much fun and great friendships were formed. Some great painting happened after as a result. I'd say um, that's one of my most memorable. I mean, there are many, you know, there's the one I took to France and again, living with the family in, in Provence, we become part of their family. They look after us, they take us out every day. You sit down at the table with them. It's just such a, it was a really wonderful experience. So they, they were memorable. There's one more in Broken Hill and I remember coming back, we were driving from Broken Hill back to Mildura and we were in a bus and there was this massive sandstorm coming and I could see it in the distance and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is it. The bus oh. is going to crash, we're going to die. <laughs> going through this sandstorm and my camera, I'm thinking, anyway, I'm going to record this, so I'm recording it. And we got through it in one piece and I looked back at my photos and I thought they would make some amazing paintings. And I did a painting of it when I 
came home and I put it in an art show and it got a second prize. So oh, wow. I was really thrilled and that was like the emotion of the experience, you know, putting it, putting it all down, remembering how it felt. exhibition Surf Coast Impressions because I've um, decided to do a collection of subjects and paintings from along the Great Ocean Road because it's very dramatic and I just love the colours and the textures and love to try and capture the light that it, as it falls on different subject matter and this one in particular uh, the arch in Port Campbell came about um, because I, I was just I was just so excited when I saw it. It was the light was just hitting it at the right time of day and it was hidden from the path and you turn and turn around from a bend and then it's like bang straight in your face. It just just hits you. It was just amazing so couldn't wait to get back home and paint that one and it was one of those rare moments in painting when the painting just falls off the brush. It just came together really quickly, which is what I wish to be able to do with all of my painting. But with that one it worked and I was really, really happy with it. This one in particular was early morning and the sun was just coming up and it just caught the light at the front. But again, working from a photograph, all of these in the photograph were black so it's the knowledge that you get from painting outdoors that you know that when you're looking at these shadowed areas there's lots of rich colour and remembering that is uh, really important to put into your painting and not follow a photograph that um, literally. only a teacher, you are also an exhibiting artist, a multi-award winning artist. What is your next exhibition? So I'm going to spend this year just thinking, exploring, uh, experimenting, consolidating a few ideas. Later next year there will be a little one somewhere, possibly down the surf coast near in Aries Inlet, but I'm also thinking down the track of um, doing something special with my local Bayside paintings, putting together an exhibition of home. And, and that is uh, Ricketts Point and Bayside, so I'm Your working favorite towards spot? that. Yeah. yeah, where it all started. <laughs> and what is the next art trip you're going to take people on after this one? After this amazing one, we are going to Greece again and we are visiting different islands on the Dodecanese coast. So that will be in June next year and I'm really excited. Looking forward to it. Haven't been overseas for two years or three, yeah. I think it yes. is. So that will be wonderful. It's going yeah. to be remarkable. Yeah. yeah, so that'll be good. Well, thank you so much for sharing your life story with our audience. Thank you so much, Alina. Thank you for inviting me. Thank and we're you. wishing you all the best. Thank you very much. Future art creations. <laughs> Thank you very much.